this video, I'm going to show you a technique that I recently learned. It's a way to correct the color change jog in one row stripes. It's also called helix knitting. And if I just lost you on that, uh, let me explain. When you're knitting in the round, when you're knitting in a tube, you are essentially knitting in a spiral. And when you work stripes in a spiral, you end up with a little stair-steppy jog in the stripes as you're working around because it's a spiral. And when you're working stripes that have more than one row per, one round per color, there's a little thing you can do to correct that. And I'll give you a link to my video, which is correcting the color change jog in stripes. Such glamorous names I have for these videos. <laughs> That's if you have more than one round of each color. Now, helix knitting is a way to not have the stair-steppy jog if you're working one round stripes. Maybe it'll make, complete sense when I actually show you what I'm working on here, the, my different samples. One row stripes are really interesting looking because we don't see them very often in knitting because people don't want the jog associated with them. But here's a way to work around that. It's a very cool technique. Let's take a look. Okay, here is a sample with one row stripes. I think they look really cool. But I knit this sample up to show you what we're trying to avoid. Here's the beginning of my round. I knit this whole sample just to be a mess. <laughs> Here's what we're trying to avoid. The beginning of my round, I've changed colors. And you can see, like, I knit around in this green. And when I came back around the end of that round, the last stitch is significantly higher than the first stitch. And it just kind of makes a mess here. So we don't have to do that anymore. We can do helix knitting. So here's my good sample. Here is the beginning of my round. Look at that. And I have markers in in different places. And each section where I'm changing colors looks really good. Looks perfect, in fact. OK, how do we do it? Let's start with this. What I'm doing here is I'm going to assume that you're using a generic hat pattern, let's say. You can start the cast on row with the different colors. I'm going to start with one solid color. I think it looks better this way because the cast on in helix knitting has to be three or has to be all of the colors. And I think a cast on looks better in one color. The cast on the rib being one color, just like I've done here. And then we're going to get started with the one row stripes after that. And then once you have an understanding on it, you can kind of expand and do what you want to do with this. I am going to need some stitch markers and a clippy marker. OK. Now here is what you do. You take the total number of stitches that you're working with in the round, and you divide it by the number of colors of yarn you're using. And this will all be on my website. If you click the little I in the upper right-hand corner, I'll have this all the math part of this spelled out. I have 72 stitches here. I want to use three colors. So 24 times 3 is 72. So I'm going to have 24 stitches in each segment. So this is the beginning of my round. I've got my clippy marker here. I'm going to, my first color I'll just keep as this blue color that I've been working with. Oops, I only took out two little ring markers. There we go. So I'm going to knit 24 stitches with my first color. Are you counting? Was that 24? It was. Now I'm going to take, going to incorporate my second color. Whoops, that's, that's not my second color. That's connected to something else. Here we go. I'll pop a marker on and just connect my second color here.
Okay, I counted that time, so I know that's 24. And get my third color ready to go. I'll pop on a marker and start with my third color. You can see why I put a clippy marker in at the beginning of my round, so I can tell with the different stitch markers going, that's how I can tell that's the beginning of my round. Okay, I'm not going to work that last stitch because I want to keep the stitch marker in place. So what I've got here is a segment of 24 of each one of my three colors. And what Helix Knitting is, like the best way I've seen it described, is the colors are chasing each other around in the tube. Chasing each other, I think of kind of like relay racers. They're handing the baton off to the next color and chasing it around. So every time you come up to the next color, you just pick up that yarn and start using it, and it just keeps this rotating thing happening. Now, the only exception to that is when you're at the beginning of the round, you just pass up the beginning of the round with the same colors. There's nothing there to change to. So, I'm at the beginning of the round, I'm just going to keep going with this pink until I hit the first marker. And that's the way it is at the beginning of the round every time you hit the beginning of the round. You work two segments with that same color. But there's not a lot of thinking involved because once you get it set up, the color, you just keep bumping into the next yarn that you need to use. <laughs> so it's not, you don't have to like keep a chart of, oh, after, you know, 48 stitches I need to knit with blue. Nope. It's, the yarn is just there. It's ready for you. Okay, so I'm up to the marker, and I'm up to this blue yarn. I'm going to get my pink yarn out of the way and slip the marker. My working yarn in blue is here. Now, this is something interesting about helix knitting. Normally, in, when we're changing colors like this, we would wrap one color around the other when we're, we'd want to catch that pink yarn in the blue yarn. Do not wrap. Do not wrap. Make sure that your pink yarn is over here and the blue yarn is over here. They're not crossing. This is how you're going to get the best looking transition. You're going to get an invisible, tra no transition. So I knit the next 24 stitches in the blue. And when I get up to that marker, I slip the marker. I'm going to get the blue yarn out of the way. The green yarn is there. It's ready for me. I don't let these yarns cross or it's like they're, <laughs> the way I said that is like they're electric wires. I don't want to wrap one over the other. I'm just going to continue with the, the green. These yarns are left over from my arm shawl. I love this color combination. And I'm approaching the beginning of the round. And there is going to be no yarn there waiting for me, which is what I expect because every time I hit the beginning of the round, I fly past it and knit a second segment in that color. That's Helix Knitting. Now something I want to mention that's going to make a big difference in your, if you're working this for the first time, 
after you've worked, you know, five or six rounds, you'll take a look at your work and you'll be like, ah, I must be doing something wrong. It doesn't look right. That is just the way it looks after five or six rounds. After you work a few more rounds, you know, 10 rounds or so, you look back and it starts to look as perfect as in this sample that I showed you, where it's really undetectable that you've changed colors at all. But the first few rounds, they don't look right, just the way it is. After all, all the samples that I did, just the way it is, the more you knit, the better it starts to look and then it looks good from then on. Anyway, all of the math part of this that I was explaining, depending on how many colors you're using, your stitch count, whatever else, that's all on my website. Good luck.